Hey bag lady, I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness and today I'm going to show you how to make my Oslo Craft Bag sewing pattern. The Oslo Craft Bag is a free pattern available to newsletter subscribers. If you're not already a subscriber, just check the link in the description. You can join my newsletter, get your free pattern, and then get to work on the video. The Oslo Craft Bag is the perfect tote for art supplies, sewing supplies, and it's also a great caddy for a baby's changing table. So grab your supplies and let's get started. Okay, before you begin cutting out the fabric and interfacing, you'll need to print out the PDF pattern and the last page has all of the templates on it. So when opening a PDF pattern, you always want to open Adobe Reader. It's a free program to download if you don't already have it on your device. And you want to print at actual size. So you don't want to print at scaling or fit to page. It has to be actual size. And you also want to measure either the one inch square or the four centimeter square to make sure that they measure exactly as they should. So mine measures out fine. So I'm going to begin cutting out my pattern pieces. When it comes to this dart, you just want to cut around it. We're not cutting the dart out for now. Okay, so when cutting the pattern pieces out, you want to cut to the outside of the black line, just like this. Okay, so after you've got all of your fabric and interfacing cut out, let me show you how to attach the fabric to interfacing. So I've got one of my lining pieces cut out right here. And here's a piece of the ShapeFlex interfacing. And one side of the interfacing feels bumpy to your fingertips. That's the side with the adhesive, and that's the side that will go against the wrong side of the fabric. I have my iron set at the cotton setting, and I'm just going to glide my iron over each area of the fabric for a few seconds. And I usually recommend using a pressing cloth. The pressing cloth will protect your iron from accidentally getting adhesive on it. For my videos, I usually don't use a pressing cloth just so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so once you've ironed the interfacing to the fabric, you want to just try to peel back a corner of the interfacing using your fingernail. So if you can peel back the interfacing easily, then that means you need to fuse it a little bit longer. But if it's nice and tight, um, then you're ready to move on. So you repeat the same process for all of the pieces that require the ShapeFlex interfacing. Okay, so I've got one of my exterior side panels cut out and the foam interfacing. So let me show you how to attach that. So some foam, foam interfacings are fusible, so you would attach those in a similar manner to how you did with the ShapeFlex. I like using By Annie Soft and Stable, which is a sew-in interfacing. And so I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to machine baste this around the outer edges using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to use some wonder clips to hold the fabric in place. And whenever I'm machine basting anything, I always like to use a longer stitch length to make the process go by a bit quicker. So I'm going to use a four millimeter stitch length. And you'll repeat the same process with all of the pieces that require the ShapeFlex interfacing and I highly recommend to use post-it notes or a scrap of paper to label all of your cut pieces after they've been attached to the interfacing just because there's a lot of similar shaped rectangles around the same size and I think the post-it notes will save some headaches later on. Okay for this first section in the pattern we're going to be assembling the lining. So to start take out your pocket pieces and we're going to place them right sides together. We're going to stitch the seven inch edge. So this is the seven inch edge right here. So I'm going to put some wonder clips on it. And we're going to sew that seven inch edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And if you had your stitch length set to three millimeters or excuse me, four millimeters for attaching the foam interfacing, set it back to your usual and mine is two and a half millimeters. Okay, going forward, make sure you backstitch at start and stop of all of the seams.
Okay, now we're gonna press this wrong sides together. First, I always like to press the seam open. It just helps get a nice seam on the top edge of that pocket piece. Okay, now I'm gonna press the, those wrong sides together. I'm just using my fingers to kind of roll out the seam. Okay, we're gonna take this back over to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch this top edge using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, and for any top stitching, I like to use a length and stitch length, so I have mine set to three millimeters. pull out one of your lining side panels and we're going to place that completed pocket piece directly on top. You want the sides and the bottom to be aligned. I'm going to put some wonder clips to hold the pocket in place and we're going to sew the sides and the bottom using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And you'll repeat the same process to attach the remaining pocket pieces to the second lining side panel. Okay, now pull out both of your divider pieces and these are squares that measure seven inches by seven inches. We're gonna place those right sides together. If your fabric is directional, um, we're gonna be stitching the top edge, so just make sure your fabric design is oriented the same way for both pieces. Okay, I'm gonna place some wonder clips on the top edge. And we're going to be stitching that top edge only using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, if you had your stitch length set to three millimeters for top stitching on that pocket, go ahead and set it back to your usual, and mine is two and a half millimeters. Okay, now let's press this the same way that we did with the pocket. So again, the seams ironed open. And then press the fabrics wrong sides together. Okay, so just as we did with the pocket, we're gonna top stitch this top edge using an eighth of an inch seam allowance and make sure you lengthen your stitch length to three millimeters. Okay, now take out one lining main panel piece and the lining main panel is a rectangle that measures eight inches at the top and then eight and a half inches on the side. So we're gonna place that completed divider piece so that the top stitch portion is at the top and we're gonna align the right hand edges. So the sides and the bottom should be aligned. So let's go ahead and put some wonder clips on this edge. I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to draw a mark that is a half inch below, a half inch up from the bottom edge. So I'm just going to draw my mark right here. So we're going to sew this seam right here using a half inch seam allowance. When you reach the line that you drew, you're going to stop sewing. So make sure you backstitch and this is where we'll be stopping sewing, right here by this line. Okay, switch your stitch length back to two and a half millimeters and just as a reminder, this is a half inch seam allowance. Okay, now we're going to add a second lining main panel piece and it's going to go right sides together with these fabrics over here. Okay, again I'm going to add some wonder clips and we're going to sew this seam using a half inch seam allowance and we're get, again we're going to stop a half inch before we reach the bottom edge. So you can either mark your fabric as you did before or you can flip to the wrong side of the exterior 
I'm um, sorry, the lining from the previous step and sew directly on top of the previous stitching. Either way will work. Okay, so here's the half inch line. We're gonna start sewing over here, half inch down from this edge. This time we're gonna sew all the way down to the opposite end. So here's that divider pocket on the inside. We need to stitch this closed at the top. Okay, now let's press that seam open. Okay, so this is what it should look like. Here's that divider. And then again, we stopped sewing a half inch before the bottom, so you should have a little bit of an opening down here. Okay, now go ahead and push those lining main panels out of the way and we're going to repeat that same process to sew the remaining side edge of the divider to the last two lining main panels. So let me pull out one of the lining main panels. So this is the third one. You want the eight inch edge to be at the top. So this is the eight and a half inch edge. And I'm just going to slide the divider right on top. Again, the sides and the bottom need to be aligned. So I'm going to pin this in place. And again, I'm going to take my fabric pen and I'm going to draw a line that is a half inch up from the bottom edge and I'm going to make a mark. So we're going to sew this again using a half inch seam allowance from the top of the divider down and we're going to stop at the line that we drew. Okay, now let's add the last lining main panel. So we're going to flip it so it's right sides together with that divider. And then I'm going to pin the side edges in place. Okay, again, here's a line that's a half inch up from the bottom edge. And we're going to sew from the very top down to the line. Okay, and this is a half inch seam allowance. Okay, again, we're going to press that seam open. Okay, now it's time to add the lining side panels. So let me just show you what we've accomplished so far. So this is the lining of the bag and here's the divider down the center of the bag. So we need to add the lining sides, which will be situated here. So we'll start on this end. We'll add one edge at a time. So pull out one of your lining side panels and that has the pocket already sewn in. So I'm going to place this right sides together with this one lining main panel. So there's just the one layer of fabric right here and here's the lining side panel. Okay, again I'm going to draw a line that's a half inch up from the bottom edge. I'm going to sew using a half inch seam allowance from the top edge down to the line that I drew. Okay, now I'm going to press the seam open that I just sewed. Okay, and now I'm going to attach the remaining side edge of that lining side panel to the lining main panel. So I'm just going to bring this over. Let me pin it first and then I'll show you what it looks like if I stand the fabric up. Okay, again, I'm going to take my fabric marker and draw a line that's a half inch up from the bottom. 
And we're going to be sewing this using a half inch seam allowance from the top to the line. So here I've got this pinned in place and let me show you what that'll look like. So here's the divider, there's the pocket, and here's that side panel. So we're going to be attaching the other side panel on the opposite end. Okay, so let's take this over to the sewing machine. Okay, so press that seam open that we just sewed. Okay, and then we're going to add the remaining lining side panel to the last edges of these two lining main panels. So here's my lining side panel with the pocket. You want to make sure the bottom edge of the pocket is on the same edge as the bottom edge of this divider. I'm going to flip the fabric so that they're right sides together and just make sure you're sewing only one through one layer of the lining main panel and here's the lining side panel. So I'm going to pin the side edges in place and again we're going to be using a half inch seam allowance and let me take my fabric marker, I'm going to draw that line again half inch up from the bottom edge. So I'm going to sew from the top to the line. Okay, now let's press that seam open. Okay, well now we're going to attach um, the remaining side edge of the side panel to the last lining main panel. So let me pin this and then I'll show you what it looks like from a top view. Okay, and again, I'm going to take my fabric marker and draw a line that's a half inch up from the bottom edge. Okay, when we go to sew this, we're going to sew from the top down to the line using a half inch seam allowance and when it's completed, it's going to look like this. Okay, now go ahead and pull out one of the lining bottom panels and we're going to attach that to the lining piece that we assembled with the divider. So go ahead and flip so that the pockets, the bottom raw edge of the pockets are facing up and you want to see all the edges where we left the bottom half inches unsewn. Okay, so I'm going to orient this lining bottom panel so that it's right sides together with these fabrics. So we're going to start pinning one edge at a time and the reason that we left this half inch unpinned is so we can line up the quarters, corners with the bottom panel. So I'm going to line up this quarter edge over here with the corner edge of the lining bottom panel and I'm going to pin those right sides together. Same thing on the opposite corner, line up the corners first and then you can pin to the middle. Okay, now I'm going to pin all the way around one edge at a time. So again, make sure you line up the corners first. Okay, and then let's keep pinning. Okay, we're going to sew these using a half inch seam allowance and we're only going to sew one edge at a time. So we'll sew this edge, break the stitching, take it off the machine, sew this edge and so on. You're going to start and stop a half inch away from each end. So you can use the stitching that's already here from when we attached 
um, the sides and the main panels. So we're going to start stitching over here using half inch seam allowance. Stop stitching when we reach the stitching line. Take it off the machine, set it back up, start stitching at this stitching line, stop stitching over here and so on, working the way all the way around until all four of the edges have been sewn. And I'm just using my fingers to get on the inside and spread the fabrics apart so that I'm only sewing on two layers of fabric at a, not, at a time and not sewing over anything else that's gotten bunched in the corners. Okay, so this is what the wrong side of the lining bottom panel looks like after it's sewn in place. As you can see, I kept these fabrics spread apart in the middle. Now when we go to sew the last lining main panel, we'll sew all those together so they'll be um, a tight unit. So let's pin that last lining bottom panel in place. So here it is, and I'm just going to flip it so that the fabrics are right sides together. And same as before, I'm just going to pin all four sides. Okay, so I'm going to pin through, like I said, all of the layers that are connected to the divider. We're going to sew through all of those layers. Okay, we're going to sew using a half inch seam allowance as we did before. And same thing. You're going to start stitching at the stitching line and you're going to stop stitching when you reach the opposing stitching line and we're going to sew one edge at a time. Okay, so this is what the completed lining should look like. And the last step to finishing this is trimming all of the seams down to a quarter, a quarter of an inch, so about in half. And there's no need to measure that, just eyeball it and it's fine. 
The reason that we're trimming down the seams is to reduce the bulk in the finished bag. And I get this question a lot too because we only sewed in a half inch and stopped a half inch away from the end. I get the question, well, won't there be a hole? Because the stitching lines are connected, as you can see from the back, the stitching line meets the other one. There won't be a visible hole or opening in the bottom of your finished bag. This is just a method that I like to use so that those corners aren't bulky. If you sewed off the end each time, you would have like a big area of bunched up fabric in your corners. So this makes the corners look really neat. Okay, go ahead and put the lining to the side for now. And go ahead and pull out your side pocket fabric piece as well as the pattern piece. So I'm going to flip to the wrong side of the fabric. And I went ahead and cut a slit through um, where that marking was for the pleat placement. And I'm going to use my fabric marker and mark both halves on the wrong side of the fabric. So I'm just going to draw a line by sticking my pen through that slit that I cut and I'll transfer that to the other half as well. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna fold the fabric so that it's right sides together. Both of those lines should be on top of each other. I'm just gonna put a wonder clip over here in place and I'm gonna stitch directly on top of the line and make sure you especially backstitch when you reach the bottom. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and press that pleat open. So to do that, just lay the fabric right side facing down and take your finger and sort of push that pleat down so that equal amounts of fabric are showing on either end of the stitching line. So I'm going to take my iron and just press that down. Okay, now I'm going to flip so the right side of the fabric is facing up and I'm going to take my ruler and measure down one inch and a quarter from the top edge and just draw a little line. And I'm using a Clover Chaco since this will be showing on the right side of the fabric. Okay, so I'm gonna top stitch this pleat down. So I'm gonna sew an eighth of an inch to the outside of the stitching line from the pleat. So I'm gonna sew over here down to the line and then I'm gonna sew the other half as well. So over here, an eighth of an inch away down to the line. Okay, so this is what it should look like from the back, and as you can see, that pleat is sewn down. You'll repeat this same process with all four of these side pocket pieces, so you should have four total. Okay, so grab a second side pocket, and we're going to place these right sides together. Make sure you align that pleat seam, and I'm going to pin that top edge in place. Okay, I'm going to sew this pinned edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. OK, 
Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and press these fabrics wrong sides together. So before I do that, I'm going to press the seam open. Okay, now I'm going to press the fabrics wrong sides together. So I'm just going to use my fingers to roll that seam out. Okay, so I'm going to pin the fabrics so that they're wrong sides together. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to take this back over to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch around the entire outer edge using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, and you're going to repeat the same process for the remaining two side pocket pieces. So you should have two of these units right here. Okay, now we're going to add the pearl snaps to the side pocket piece. So I like using the snap setter tool. Cam snaps are also another option, um, but this tool is really easy to use. Um, I'm using these cap snaps in antique silver finish, but um, they, they're available in other finishes as well. And these tools are available on my website as well as as well as this handle, which I think is pretty nifty. It's sort of an all-purpose handle, and it has several different sizes of screws built in. So let me just show you the, the hammer really quick. So there's a larger screwdriver, and there's two additional smaller ones as well. So these are handy for other sewing-related things, such as if you're installing twist locks, that small screwdriver would be handy for that. Okay, so let me show you how to install the snaps if you haven't put any in before. Okay, so I'm going to grab my side pocket piece and we're going to measure down from the top edge one inch and it needs to be centered and you can use your, your pleat right down the middle because that'll be the center. Okay, so I'm going to measure an inch down and make a mark. and I'm going to install the snap at that mark. So I'm going to take the snaps out of the packaging and I'm going for the female half of the snap. So it's the snap part with the opening in it. And I'm using caps, so I'm going to pull out one of my cap pieces. So this cap piece has prongs in it um, like that. So I need the snap to be facing outwards. So this piece is going to go in the front and the cap will go behind. So let me show you how to set that up in the tool. Okay, so first off in the tool, you want to situate those prongs right on top of the marking that you made. And because of the pleat, it's a little bit thick, but it'll be okay. It'll go through just fine. And I'm going to set that cap right on top of the circle in the first bottom piece of the snap setter tool. Okay, so holding that <clears throat> cap in place, I'm going to align the next portion of the tool, which is the piece that's flat. So that just goes in there like that. And then finally the female half of the snap goes in and there's sort of a side that has um, what I like to think of as a flower shape. That piece, that flower shape goes facing up and then the last portion of the tool goes right on top. And then I'm just gonna use my hammer to give it a, a few quick pounds. Okay, and that piece is all ready to add to the rest of the bag. Okay, now grab two of your flat pieces. We're going to flip them so that they're right sides together. And I'm going to put some wonder clips all the way around.
we're going to sew all the way around using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, except on the top edge, we need to leave about a four inch opening. So I'm just going to take my fabric marker and leave myself a marking as a reminder to leave that opening. So we're going to start sewing over here, work your way around and you're going to stop sewing when you reach the opposing mark. And again, this is a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, go ahead and clip the corners. So that just means cut diagonally, being careful not to cut into your stitching. And then we're also going to notch the curved edges. So notching just means cutting tiny little V's about halfway up the seam allowance. And again, you're not cutting through the stitching at all. And what notching does is when you turn the fabrics wrong sides together, it helps the curves look nice and smooth and not have extra fabric bunched up in those curved corners. Okay, so now I'm going to turn this right side out and I'm going to use a turning tool to poke out the corners. Okay, so here's the turning tool that I like to use. I like it because it has sort of a, a rounded tip, which is helpful for poking out the corners without damaging them. So this is a turning tool, precision tool by RNK Distributing. Okay. So remember we had that opening at the top of the flap. I'm going to turn the opening toward the inside by about a quarter of an inch. Okay, and then I'm going to give everything a good press. I'm just going to put a wonder clip on the top straight edge for now just to hold that opening closed. And then I'm just using my fingers to sort of roll out the seams. Okay, I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch just the curved edge using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm not going to sew this straight edge at all. Okay, and I have my machine stitch lengthened to three millimeters for this top stitching. Okay, now it's time to install the male half of the magnetic snap. So the male half of the magnetic snap is the piece with the nub. Okay, so if you're using the snap setter tool, which I am, or if you're using the cam snaps or another brand of snaps, that's fine. I'm going to make a mark that's centered and up a half inch from this curved edge over here. So I'm going to take my ruler. All right, first find the center and then I'm going to make a marking half inch up from the curved edge. So I'm going to place that right here. Okay, so again, I've got my cap and I'm going to place the prongs through the fabric and then bring out that snap setter tool again. Okay, I'm going to lay that cap piece on the circle, place the second layer of the tool right down on top of it. And then the male half of the snap goes in place so that the nub is facing up. Okay, now I'm going to hammer that in place. Okay, so you're going to repeat the same process for the second flat piece. So you should have two flat pieces total and two side pocket pieces total and they all should have 
the snap portion installed. Okay, grab one of your exterior side panels. The short end should be at the top. And we're gonna draw a line that's three and a half inches down from the top edge. And again, I'm using my clover chaco for that. Okay, so I'm gonna take one of the flat pieces and I'm gonna place it so that the nub part of the snap is facing me. I'm going to align this edge of the flap with the line that I just drew on the side panel and it needs to be centered so I'm just going to take my ruler and quickly measure and make sure that it's centered on there and it is. Okay so I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. I'm going to sew on top of the flap an eighth of an inch away from this pressed edge from one end to the other and when I do that that opening in the flap will be sealed closed. Okay, so this is what it looks like when that flap is attached. And finally, we're gonna attach one of the side pocket pieces. So you wanna make sure the female half of the snap is facing right side up. And we're gonna pin in place so that the sides and the bottom are aligned. Okay, so I'm gonna sew the sides and the bottom using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, and you can go ahead and snap that snap in place. And then repeat this process so that you have the second flap and the side pocket attached to the remaining um, exterior side panel. So you should have two of those. Okay, go ahead and take out one front pocket binding piece. And this is just a piece of the solid fabric with no interfacing on it. And we're gonna press one long edge toward the wrong side by a quarter of an inch. So I'm just gonna take my fabric marker and draw a line that's a quarter of an inch up from the bottom long edge and I'm going to press that toward the wrong side. Okay, and you're going to repeat this process for the other two binding pieces so you should have a total of three. Okay, go ahead and take out one front pocket piece. It looks like this and then grab your binding. So I'm gonna have the pressed under edge of the binding against the right side of the fabric and the raw edges will be aligned. I'm gonna put a few wonder clips to hold this in place. And we're gonna sew the entire outer edge of the binding using an eighth of an inch seam allowance, so all the way around. Okay, and I have my stitch length set back down to two and a half millimeters. Okay, and I'm going to trim any overhang of the binding from the wrong side of that front pocket. And you'll repeat this process to attach the remaining two binding strips to two more front pocket pieces. So you should have a total of three that look just like this. Okay, now go ahead and take out your front pocket paper pattern piece. And I went ahead and cut the dart out. 
So I'm going to flip to the wrong side of that front pocket piece and I'm going to mark the dart on both halves of the wrong side of the fabric. Okay, so I'm going to pinch those corners so that the fabrics are right sides together. And you want to make sure, um, this is called the dart leg, you want to make sure those are aligned on both sides. Okay, and I'm going to put a wonder clip to hold that in place. And same thing on the other side. Okay, we're going to sew directly on top of the line from here to here. And same thing on the other end. Okay, so this is what it should look like after it's been sewn. I'm going to trim both of these down to a quarter of an inch seam allowance, and you don't have to measure it, just eyeball it, it's fine. Okay, so you're going to repeat this same process for sewing the darts for the three pieces with the binding, and then you should also have three pieces with no binding. So same thing, sew the darts in those pieces as well. Okay, so grab one piece with the, the binding on the top and one piece without it. And we're going to place those right sides together. I'm going to pin all the way around the outer edge. And when you get to pinning the darts, make sure you try your best to align the seams of the darts. I'm also going to take my fabric marker and I'm going to draw two lines. We need to leave an opening on the side edge that's about three inches. So I'm going to draw markings um, where I'm going to leave that opening. You want to avoid the dart and you want to give yourself a little bit of room for that top corner. Okay, so I'm going to push my darts so that one is toward um, the bottom and one's toward the top so that it's not too bulky where those dart seams are. Okay, we're going to sew this using a quarter of an inch seam allowance and don't forget to leave that opening. I'm going to clip the corner, so I'm just going to cut diagonally across these two corners over here. And wherever there's a curve, I'm going to cut little V's. Okay, now I'm going to turn this right side facing out and press. And I'm going to use my turning tool to poke out those top corners. Okay, so when I press this, I'm also going to press that opening toward the wrong side by a quarter of an inch. And I'm just going to put a wonder clip on that opening for now. Okay, I'm going to take this back over to the sewing machine. I'm going to lengthen my stitch length to three millimeters and I'm going to top stitch the top edge only an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. OK, 
and you're going to repeat this same process so that you have three of the front pocket pieces total. Okay, now go, go ahead and pull out one of your exterior main panels and you'll need either a fabric marker or a chalk and your ruler. So in step number 34 of the pattern, there's an illustration for a bunch of markings that we're gonna do for placement of those front pocket pieces. So to start, we're gonna measure and draw a line, a horizontal line that's one inch up from the bottom edge. Okay, so the next horizontal line is gonna be three and one quarter of an inch down from the top edge. Okay, now we're gonna draw four vertical lines. So the first one is gonna be three quarters of an inch over from the left-hand side. Okay, the second line is going to be five and one quarters of an inch over from the left-hand side. Okay, so now we're gonna draw a line that's three quarters of an inch over from the right-hand side. And then finally, five and one quarters of an inch over from the right-hand side. Okay, so now go ahead and grab all of your front pocket pieces and we're gonna use the lines that we made, sort of a grid, as positioning for the front pocket pieces. So we're gonna sew them in place one, one at a time. So you wanna align the sides and the bottom with the sides and the bottom of the front pocket pieces. And you may wish to use traditional pins. So this front pocket piece is gonna have a bit of a lift just because it needs to fit in between the margin. We're gonna sew the sides and the bottom using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to lengthen my stitch length to three millimeters and we'll sew, sew and add one of these front pocket pieces at a time. Okay, now we're gonna add a second front pocket. Again, we're gonna use those markings that we made as sort of a margin for this piece to fit in. And again, I'm gonna use some of my pins to hold it in place. And I'm making sure especially to get these bindings so that they're aligned. Okay, so just as before, I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew the sides and the bottom using an eighth of an inch seam allowance.
Okay, so this is what it should look like when all three of those front pocket pieces are attached to the exterior main panel. Okay, so now we're gonna make the, the back pocket. So grab both of your back pocket pieces and place them right sides together. I'm gonna pin along the top edge. And we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and sew this pinned edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. We're going to press the seam open. Okay, and then go ahead and press those fabrics wrong sides together. Okay, we're going to top stitch this pressed edge using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. grab your remaining exterior main panel and we're going to stick that completed back pocket right on top. So the sides and the bottom are going to be aligned. I'm going to use some wonder clips to hold that into place. And we're going to sew the sides and the bottom using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now go ahead and put this to the side for now. Okay, now we're gonna move on to making the handles and the tabs. So I have two different methods. If you're using quilting cotton, I'll show you how to do that. And then I'll also show you how to make the handles if you wanna make them from cork, leather, or vinyl. So let's start with the quilting cotton. Flip to the wrong side of the fabric, and we're gonna press the fabric's wrong sides together in half. Okay, now go ahead and open the fabric back out and we're going to press this bottom edge so that it hits the center crease. Okay, we'll do the same thing for the top edge. We'll press this top edge down toward the center crease. Okay, go ahead and refold those fabrics. And then both of the long edges should be toward the inside. Okay, I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch both of the long edges an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric.
now I'm going to take that handle piece and I'm going to draw a line with my chalk that is a half inch in from the short raw edge. And then a second line that's also in from the raw edge, but it's going to be one and a half inches this time. Okay, I'm going to take my iron and I'm going to press both of these markings toward the wrong side by the lines that I drew. I'm just going to put a wonder clip on, on the, this end for now, and I'm going to repeat the same process for the opposite end. Okay, again, a half inch and one and a half inch, and pressing toward the wrong side. Okay, and you'll repeat this process for the second handle piece if you're making a handle with quilting cotton or another fabric that frays. So you should have two handles total. Okay, now go ahead and take out your two tab pieces and we're going to place them right sides together. Okay, we're going to sew both of the long edges and one short end using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, make sure you turn down your stitch length to your regular and mine's two and a half millimeters. Okay, now I'm going to clip these two corners and then I'm going to turn this right side out and press. So I'm actually going to grab my fast turn turning tool, which looks like this. It's a tube with this piece that comes out with a wire. It's got a corkscrew on one end. Let me show it above this um, white interfacing so you can see. The corkscrew is what pulls the fabric out through the tube. So I'm going to stick the tube in the opening first. And then I'm going to insert the cork corkscrew in the opening. Okay, I'm going to twist it till that corkscrew comes out the other end and then that corkscrew will pull that fabric back through the tube. Okay, to release the corkscrew all you have to do is twist it a little bit until the corkscrew comes out. Okay, so I'm going to use my turning tool to poke out the corners and then I'm going to give this a ta tab a good press on both sides. Okay, you're going to repeat the same process with all of your tab pieces in pairs and then you should have four each of these completed tab pieces. Okay, if you're using cork or leather or vinyl for your handles, the assembly is going to be slightly different. So I've got a piece of cork fabric right here that I've cut out and I'm going to flip to the wrong side of the fabric. I'm going to draw a line that's right down the middle of the fabric so it's going to be one inch up from the long edge. Okay, so I'm going to do some finger pressing toward that center line. So I'm going to, for that I'm going to use Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape. It's a double sided tape and it's a quarter of an inch wide. So the first side has the paper layer on it right here and then underneath is the first sticky side. So I'm going to stick that down maybe about an eighth of an inch away from the line on the top and the bottom and just use your fingers to give it a good press. You can also use a washable glue stick. Okay, so I'm going to stick that down on the other side of the line as well. Okay, and then just take your fingernail and peel back a corner of the Wash Away Wonder Tape and it should reveal the second side of the adhesive.
Okay, so now I'm going to take the bottom long edge and bring it up toward that line that I made. And I'm also going to stick some Wonder Clips on there just to hold it in place. And then bring that top long edge in toward the center line as well. Okay, so if you're sewing with a vinyl or a leather, you'll want to use either a Teflon foot or a walking foot. A lot of times, depending on the climate, um, with cork fabric, you can just use your regular sewing machine foot. Okay, so I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. I'm going to sew an eighth of an inch away from this raw edge that's showing on either side, so this edge and this edge. And then I'm also going to top stitch both of the long edges an eighth of an inch away from the pressed edge as well. Okay, for this top stitching, I'm lengthening my stitch length to three millimeters.
Okay, take one of the handle pieces and you're gonna draw a line that's two and a quarter inch away from the short end. And we're gonna draw another one that's also two and a quarter of, a, of an inch away from the line. Okay, so instead of making the individual tab pieces, we're just cutting them off from the finished handle. So from the first tab piece, I cut, sorry, from the first handle, I cut two tab pieces and you'll repeat that for the second handle. So each handle will have two tab pieces cut from it. Okay, now take the handle piece and we're gonna draw a line that's one inch away from each short end. Okay, so instead of pressing with the iron, we're just gonna finger press toward the wrong side at that line. And I'm just gonna slide a wonder clip on there. And then same thing with the other side. Okay, so go ahead and set that handle to the side for now. Okay, now take out your tab pieces and this process going forward will be the same if you've made a leather tab or cork or if you've made one from quilting cotton. So you're gonna draw a line that's one inch down from the top edge and just draw a horizontal line. And then the same thing for the quilting cotton if that's what you used. Okay, so now you wanna take out your metal rectangles and these should be one inch wide and you'll just slide the rectangle and bend it down at the line that you made. And go ahead and put some wonder clips on there to hold that in place. Okay, same process for the tab made with quilting cotton. You'll place the metal rectangle at that one inch line and then fold the fabric in half. Okay, so my bag has the quilting cotton tab, so I'm gonna put um, this tab made with the cork fabric to the side. Going forward, I'm just gonna continue on with the quilting cotton tabs, but like I said, the process for stitching them in place will be the same. Okay, so go ahead and pull out one of your exterior main panels. We're gonna take the ruler and either a chalk or fabric marker, and we're gonna draw a line that's one inch down from this top edge. Okay, I'm also gonna draw two vertical lines. Each vertical line will be three inches in from each side edge. Okay, so go ahead and take out two of the tab pieces and each tab piece is gonna be placed to the inside of the margin that you drew and this top folded edge of the tab is going to nestle at that one inch line and it'll be in from the side by three inches. So each tab piece is gonna be placed over here. We're gonna sew about a quarter of an inch away from the hardware, we're gonna just sew straight across and we're also gonna sew an eighth of an inch away from um, the bottom edge of the tab. So right here and right here we're gonna be stitching and you're not gonna be sewing over this back pocket piece at all. Okay, so this is what that completed exterior main panel looks like, and you'll repeat the same process for the remaining exterior main panel. Okay, so now it's time to start assembling the body of the exterior. So we'll start with one of the exterior main panels, it doesn't matter which one, and we're gonna add one of the exterior side panels. So we'll place those right sides together, and I'm gonna pin that side edge. And just like we did for the lining, we're gonna sew using a half inch seam allowance, except we're gonna stop a half inch away from this bottom edge over here. So I'm gonna take my fabric marker and I'm gonna draw a line that's a half inch up from this bottom edge. So I'm gonna start sewing up here, half inch seam allowance, and stop sewing when I reach the line. Okay, make sure you change your stitch length back to your usual, and mine's two and a half millimeters.
Okay, we're going to press this seam open. Okay, and then go ahead and add the second exterior side panel on the other edge of the exterior main panel. So again, I'm going to flip those so that they're right sides together and pin. Okay, again, I'm going to draw a line that's a half inch up from the bottom edge. And we're going to sew using a half inch seam allowance and we're going to stop sewing when we reach the line. And one little note, if you're having trouble sewing as we add through all these extra layers, feel free to swap out for your walking foot on your sewing machine. Okay, let's press that seam open again. And now we're going to add that last exterior main panel. So we'll start by adding it to this end. And you want to just make sure you're adding it so your pockets are not upside down. So this is the correct way. Both of the tabs should be near the top of the bag. So I'm going to flip so it's right sides together. Again, we're going to pin the side edges. And same as before, we're going to sew this using a half inch seam allowance and I'm going to draw my line that's a half inch away from the bottom and that's where we're going to stop sewing. Okay, press that seam open. Okay, we're going to sew the, the last edge of the exterior main panel to the opposing um, side panel. So again, those are going to be right sides together. Okay, again, half inch seam allowance and we're going to stop at that line, which will be a half inch above the bottom edge. Okay, press that last seam open. Okay, now we're going to add the exterior bottom panel. So again, make sure the tabs are near the top of the bag. So the top of the bag is right over here. We're going to be at attaching the bottom panel to the bottom of the bag. Okay, so here's the exterior bottom panel. I'm going to flip it so that the fabrics are right sides together. And we're going to pin in a similar manner to what we did with the lining. So again, we're going to match up the corners. So the reason we left this bottom half edge open is so we could access this corner right here. And we're going to pin that to the exterior bottom. Okay, and then just work your way around the bag. We're going to pin all four edges. Same thing, line up the, the corners first. Okay, so again, same thing with the lining. We're going to be using a half inch seam allowance and we're only going to sew one edge at a time. So we're going to start sewing from over here where we can see the stitching line. We're going to start sewing here and then we're going to stop sewing when we reach the stitching line on this end. Of course, make sure you backstitch. 
break the stitching, take it off the machine, and then we'll move around to sew this edge from the stitching line to the stitching line and so on, all four edges. Okay, go ahead and trim down all the seams to approximately a quarter of an inch so you'll be trimming down the seams in half. Okay, so now we're going to turn the exterior right side facing out. Just use your fingers to kind of poke out the bottom corners of the bag. Okay, so now I'm going to place the lining inside the exterior. So the lining is going to stay wrong side facing out and it's just going to go right inside. Okay, so I'm going to align the seams and I'll pin those four seams first. Fabrics are going to go wrong sides together and the top raw edge is going to be aligned. Okay, and then go ahead and pin the rest of the way. Okay, so one little note. Um, I wrote it as a, a notation in the pattern. If you would like to, you can use um, a permanent fabric spray. And I listed um, the ThermoWeb Thermo Web Spray and Bond Fusible Adhesive as one of those options. But you could go ahead and spray some on the wrong side of the exterior and then go ahead and 
stick your lining to the exterior wrong sides together. So that, that's just an option, completely optional. I'm going to skip the spray for mine and I'm just going to sew these uh, along the top edge instead. Okay, so either option's fine to go with. I'm going to go ahead and take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch this top edge wrong sides together using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Again, if you're using that spray adhesive, you'll want to attach that adhesive before you stitch the top edge. Okay, go ahead and grab your top binding piece and we're going to place it right sides together so that the short ends meet. We're going to sew the short ends using a half inch seam allowance. Okay, now go ahead and press that seam open and we're going to attach this top binding to the top edge of the bag. So we're going to start pinning it to the lining side. So I'm going to finger press this binding so that it's wrong sides together in half, so just like this. And I'll start with the seam against the back of the bag. So I'm just going to go ahead and put one, one wonder clip over here and let me tilt it a little sideways so you can see what I'm doing. So we're pinning this to the lining. Okay, I'm just going to work my way all the way around making sure to finger press the fabrics wrong sides together as I go. Okay, so we're going to sew this pinned edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around.
Okay, now go ahead and flip that binding and wrap it around to the exterior side. So let me show you how, how that'll look. Just like that. So you're gonna cover the stitching line from when we attach the binding on the opposite side. Okay, so I'm gonna work my way all the way around. Okay, we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and you're going to sew an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric all the way around and that will secure the binding. Okay, go ahead and lengthen your stitch length to three millimeters for this top stitching. Okay, so last thing is to add the handle. So you should already have either if you're making the quilting cotton or with leather or cork handles, you should have the ends of the handles held back with wonder clips and pressed if you are using the, the quilting cotton. So we're just gonna add the handles to each either side of the purse hardware. So I'm just gonna take the clips off for just a second. And the hardware is gonna nestle in that second crease right over there. And I'm going to put the wonder clips back on. And then, of course, make sure that the strap is not twisted before you attach the other end. Okay, so we're going to be sewing about a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the hardware. And then we'll sew a second line of stitching just so we can cover this pressed end of the end of the handle. Okay, add the second handle in the same way that you did with the first. Okay, so now it's time to give the bag a good press. 
you want to make sure you press all of the sides and especially these top corners over here. You can sort of shape it with your fingers and give the corners a press so it creates sort of a boxy shape. And then just work your way around the bag pressing all of the top corners and also pressing the sides. So I like to sort of flatten the corners out, the side edges with my fingers and then just press it down with the iron. So finish pressing your bag and then you're all finished. Thanks so much for sewing along with me. I can't wait to see your finished bag. Be sure to join my Facebook group and post a photo of your finished project there. If you liked this project and would like to see more, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And remember, if I can do it, so can you.